Thank you so much for being one of our coaches for Honor Health. I want to give you a quick overview of what this process looks like, starting off with number one, the background in Honor Health and our relationship with them. Number two, our whole 360 process. While you are not going to be involved directly in that, you are going to help these people prepare for and develop a development plan after getting the 360. So we'll talk about that. Number three, I want to go into what the expectations are with respect to the person getting the 360 and their supervisor. What kind of support does that look like? Number four, this is really about you, is the whole coaching process. How many hours do you have, et cetera? And then lastly, I want to give you some information about what we can do to support you. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions as a result of this. So number one, background in Honor Health. We've been working with them for probably 12 years. Uh, they are a mm, mid-sized healthcare system down in the Phoenix metropolitan area. They went through a merger from the east side to west side about, um, oh, eight years ago. Uh, their CEO is a very wonderful, warm-hearted former C CFO by the name of Todd Laporte, who really understands uh, strategy and developing people. And he's done a great job of really enhancing the culture over at Honor Health. Um, and what has happened is that they've had a lot of different organizations attempt to merge with them or buy them out. Those have all fallen by the wayside. And then after COVID, and now that we're back in gear this year, the board of directors approved a new five-year strategic plan. One of the big pillars in that plan is around culture and developing people. And one of the aspects that they really wanted this particular leadership team to focus on is succession planning. In the past, succession planning has been a popularity contest. Now they're really trying to put some more rigor into it, not to the degree of like doing a nine block, but at least they're moving the needle in the right direction. For example, we've been able to help them a little bit from the background, and they now have what they call five lead with honor competencies, which we will give you a copy of. And then we thought, why don't you now have the 360s that we've traditionally done with you include five statements out of a list of 10 that each one directly aligns to one of those lead with honor competencies. So that's a new and big thing for them. So I'm very pleased that we finally are getting succession planning and finally getting alignment moving in the right direction with honor health. So let me talk about number two, which is the MFI 360 process. These are live interviews. These are customized 360s that are co-developed with the client based on their career, and their aspirations, what the leaders that they report to want, et cetera. It's not a standardized 360 set of questions. That's traditionally how we have done it. And the interviews take about, mm, about 60 minutes. There are uh, 10 standard questions that we typically ask uh, on a scale of one to six Likert scale. Like for example, uh, this person has a leadership brand that others want to follow. How would you rate that person on a scale of one to six? Six meaning I really agree, one meaning I really don't agree, and two, three, and four, and five, somewhere between. Number two, then we always say as a follow-up, why did you give that person the score that they that you did? What, what examples can you provide me in that? And then the last follow-up question is, how can that person get better relative to this particular topic. So we go through each one of those uh, follow-up statements with each one of those 10 statements. Now, this year is a little different in that the 10 statements that they uh, have, five of them are gonna be standard. Everybody's gonna have the same, same five statements that will be a part of the 360s. And they will each relate to one of the five uh, lead with honor competencies. So now we finally have some alignment and consistency. And then in the future, they can kind of go back and take a look at how people were rated over a period of time. So it becomes a data point for succession planning. So that was a big uh, improvement there. So in terms of the 360 process, again, um, the, the person that you will be working with 
we will get them set up uh, with respect to all the information that they need, the forms that they need to fill out. They will have information about the five lead with honor competencies. They will understand that out of the 10 questions, five of them are gonna always be the same for each person that relate to those competencies. We'll give them all that. We'll give them information about their raters and how many they should have, which by the way is between 12 and 15. We'll tell them that you should have at least three people per rater group for confidentiality. Um, we'll also give them a sample email to send to those raters as a way of saying thanks <laughs> ahead of time for participating in this. And then of course, as when we know that's happened, we start the scheduling process. All right, so that's the basic process for setting a person up for 360. Now the expectations between the person that you will be working with and their leader is as follows. We would hope that the leader and your coachee will get together and talk about their career aspirations, their goals, and that might help the leader think about what kinds of questions of the 10, which are five that they can focus on, do I wanna ask that's specific to me, my career aspirations, my, my time in my career, maybe I'm gonna be retiring soon, what have you, what do I really feel would be helpful for me to move forward? And so the other part is that we are going to ask, uh, that we have been asked to provide the numeric output of those five questions that directly relate to their leadership competencies back to leadership so they can start tracking this over time. You know. How did so-and-so do two years ago, five years ago, with respect to those five statements? Uh, we'll also provide them in the report that we will write. You don't need to worry about that. We'll rewrite the report um, that will focus on what are two or three things that this person should really be thinking about moving forward on. Um, so once the 360 has been written, we're good to go. So let's talk about the coaching process, which is really where you come in. We have essentially 12 coaching sessions for 2024. That's what you have to work with. Yes, I know it's not enough. It was hard fought to even get that. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, what we would suggest this be the way you do it. Take two or three coaching sessions, as soon as we give you the thumbs up, to meet with your people, your person over Zoom, get to know them, their aspirations, what they think their strengths and weaknesses are, set up your own sort of um, relationship, your guiding principles, expectations with each other, all the things that you normally do as a great coach, and then help them start thinking about, you know, what would you like to be rated on is a th in a 360 process? You know, think about the big picture with their career. Get them thinking about that a little bit. So take two or three sessions on that. Now, that could mean that once those two or three sessions are done, there could be a pause of several weeks, maybe even two or three months, because now we got to get the 360 scheduled, which takes a while. We got to get it written, and then we deliver it, usually over Zoom, and you will get a copy of that report. And then we'd love it if you want to be a part of just hearing the report being delivered to your client. Once that's been done, boom, your coaching sessions really are now up and running, where we would suggest at least probably two times a month for a while and maybe taper off a bit. But again, remember, you've only got 12 out of the entire year. So if you've already used two or three, you might only have nine or 10 left over. So use them and, and combine them or uh, bring them together the way you see fit. And I think that will be very helpful. How can we help you? Number one. Uh, we have a gal on our team named Nisa McLaughlin. She can help you with scheduling uh, your calls with your clients. So all good. Uh, Mel on our team is the one who handles all of our um, bookkeeping and, and invoices. And so make sure that you get your invoices to her uh, in a timely manner. And then uh, she'll make sure that you're paid in a timely manner. And then... Um, Lastly, just come to me if you have any questions or want any resources, whereby we've got 30 some odd years worth of tips and tools and TED Talks and models and articles and podcasts that there may be something out there that you think could be useful for your client relative to the development plan that you help them make 
as a result of their 360. So please feel free to reach out and I'd be happy to uh, provide that to you. So what I'm gonna get, make sure that you get here shortly are three things for sure. One is the lead with honor competencies and the statements that we be a part of every 360. So you have that up front. We know that you will have that. That's number two. And number three, we'll give you the coaching scorecard. Uh, once we are up and running, which should be any day now, um, you will get a introduction with your client uh, that will happen with Nisa and she will help facilitate you connecting with the person with whom we thought would be a great uh, match for you. Of course, if you feel like the chemistry isn't right um, for whatever reason, that certainly try to resolve that. But if not, we can certainly um, find another coach for that particular person. So thank you so much. Reach out with any questions. So appreciate all that you do.